All right, guys, we're going to be covering the second half of homework seven, so part two. This is going to be covering the word problems or the, the equations in homework seven. So assuming the numbers are still right, uh, this should be number 32 on. We covered uh, one through 31 last time, so this should be number 32 on. So again, the back half of the homework has more equation solving problems, percent problems, you could say. Some of them are word problems, some of them are not. Um, a couple of things I'm gonna say here before we really get going. This formula right here is the formula that I'm going to use to solve the majority of the percent problems, okay? Whole times percent equals part. Percentages are one of those things, guys, where every, no, I'll say everybody, but most people have different ways of doing them. You might've been taught how to do percentages a completely different way than what I'm going to do. However you do them, as long as you get the answer, as long as you can show me work and back it up, I'm not really gonna to be too fussed about it. So keep that in mind. If the way I'm showing this to you doesn't sit with you, you don't like it, um, then you know, try another method. There are, there's various ways, I mean, they all amount to the same thing, obviously, but there are various ways to get percentage problems done. Um, again, the way I use it is whole percent part, because to me, this just makes sense. Think about how percentages work. You have your whole paycheck, you get a percent taken out and you have a part that you keep afterwards, right? I mean, it's just like how paychecks work. It's just, you know, go to the grocery store, here's your bill, there's your uh, tax, and then, you know, the tax part, more another part that you gotta pay. That's what percentages do, they adjust. You start with an amount and then you either add a percentage to it or, or subtract a percentage from it and now you have a different value. And this is how percentages work, okay? Not every problem in the homework can be solved with this equation, but most of them can. We'll talk about the other kinds later. Um, so just to go ahead and get this out of the way, there's three sort of flavors here, right? This is an equation. You're going to have whole times percent equals the part. So this is kind of just the generic formula I'm going to be using, whole W times percent equals P. There's three different uh, uh, numbers in this equation, and any of them could be missing, right? You could get the kind where you don't know the whole, but you know the percent and the part. You could get the kind where you know the whole and the percent, but you don't know the part. And you could get the kind where you know the whole and the part, but you don't know the percent, right? And if you want to, you can go back in and put X's here for the missing pieces. I mean, if you'd like to do that, it's totally up to you. But just realize any of the three pieces can be missing. You might be missing the whole, you might be missing the part, you might be missing the percent. And that's sort of what I meant by there being three different flavors. But just realize that it is the same formula in all three different cases, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go through each one of these and do two examples. Uh, one where it's not really a word problem and then one where it will be a word problem. In a couple cases, I took problems directly out of your homework just to help you guys out a little bit. So when I do that, I'll mark the number next to them. It's only a couple, but you know, just worth, worth noting. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a clean paper here because this is uh, unfortunately gonna require a little bit of writing. This is gonna be sort of one of the more drawn out ones here. So we'll go ahead and get a new piece of paper and get going. So again, I'm gonna write that formula up at the top one more time. Um, just because I don't want you forgetting it. And again, this is what I'm going to be using. If this is not what you're comfortable with, you don't have to use it, certainly. Um, but this is the formula that I'm going to be using. On the exam, you will have to show me some form of work that holds up, whether it's this or something else, it doesn't matter. Uh, another popular way to do these is what's called is over of. And that's how, whoa, what's going on with the camera there? That's how it, uh, ooh, I don't know what, are we having an autofocus problem here or something? There we go. Um, I, I don't, say one version is better than the other, but the, the thing about using is and of, if you know what I'm talking about, if you don't, don't worry about it. If you do, uh, not all the word problems use the words is and of, you know what I mean? So it's, it's not the greatest thing to go against, but anyway, we'll start off with this. What is 17% of 80? And this is not what I meant when I said a word problem. This is, you know, uh, or let's, you know what, let's not, let's do 85. Let's make this come out like not. Completely horrible. Let's do 85. I think 80 will be a little messy. Let's do 85. What is 17% of 85? Doesn't mean it couldn't be 80, obviously, but for demonstration purposes, I don't want something that's just going to be huge. So, what is 17% of 85? So, what I want to do is set this up into this equation, whole percent part, and go from there. The way you like to think about this is the whole, right? Remember that we said that's the whole. I like to think about this as the starting value, kind of abbreviating there. So, whatever you started with or your total, that's the whole and the part will be what's left over, generally kind of the way to think about it. So over here, we're taking 17% of 85. Well, when we set the equation up, 
what I like to do is plug in the most obvious piece. Now, is 85 the part or is 85 the whole? I don't know about that yet, but certainly 17 is the percent. I don't think we can argue with that, right? Be careful. When you're doing percent word problem or any kind of problem with percentages, you don't actually use percentages. Notice in none of the problems that we did last time, did we multiply percents or divide percents or anything because you, you don't. What you do is you have to convert the percent to a decimal. This is why we covered conversions last time, so we you know such length. So 17% is the percent most of the time. And I won't say this is true everywhere, but in this class, if I give you the percent, that's the percent you're using. So 17% is the percent, but you've got to convert it to a decimal, so 0.17. Now the question is, is the 85 the whole or the part? And because there's no context here in a word problem, it's sort of ambiguous, right? I said the whole is sort of the starting value, but this isn't a story. We don't know what we started with, or it doesn't really explain that. The easiest way to tell here, and this is using the is and of thing, Whatever you're taking the percent of, that's the whole. Every time you're taking 17% of 85, whatever you take the percent of is the whole. Whether it says the word of or not. Imagine you were at the grocery store and your bill was $17 and there's a 6% uh, tax. What are you taking 6% of? The $17, which would make the 17 the whole. So in our case, we're taking 17% of 85. 17 is the percent and we're taking it of 85. That makes 85 the whole and that makes the part the unknown. Which again, if you, if you don't like leaving a blank, you can put an X there, it's totally up to you. So this is how it's set up. I mean, so really what you're doing is multiplying 85 by 0.17. If you already knew that and you didn't need to show all the setup, that's fine. As long as I see something on the test to, to indicate that you knew these needed to be multiplied. I'm just trying to explain why to you, because you're taking 17% of 85, which is times, and we're asking you what comes out of that, right? So this is just a matter of multiplying by decimals. Remember I told you guys, the decimals are not gonna go away. You will have to multiply them and divide with them, not just in the decimal unit, but in the percentages as well. So heads up. Seven times five, 35, carry the three. Seven times eight, that's 56, plus three, that's 59. Remember how we do decimals, we ignore the decimal when we're multiplying until the end. Add in our zero. One times five is five, one times eight is eight. Now just add it together. Five, nine and five is 14, there's a one. Six and eight, that's 14. And then there was two decimals in the problem. So there will be two decimal places in the answer. So 1445. And just make sure that makes sense to you. We're asking what 85%, or excuse me, no, I'm reading that backwards. We're asking what 17% of 85 is. Well, it shouldn't be very big, right? 17% is not much. So 17% of 85 should be a fairly small number. 1445 seems reasonable. It doesn't guarantee you it is correct. I mean, in this case it is because we worked it out. But um, it's good to ballpark your answers and kind of say like, does this even fall in the realm of possibility? If that answer was 1,703 or 4,009, it's obviously not 17% 85. 17% 85 should be much smaller than 85. 14.45 seems to fit, okay? So that's the first kind where we were missing the part. Let's do a word problem like that now, same situation. Same situation. I'm gonna go ahead and do one out of the homework here because there was one in the homework I felt was pretty straightforward. This will be number 34 out of your homework. We'll go ahead and do this one with you. And again, remember, I mean, it depends. The versions, the homework is randomly generated to an extent, so it won't be identical to this. We'll go ahead and use whole percent in part. And I'm gonna abbreviate the question. If you wanna see the question in its entirety, just check out 34 in the homework. I'm gonna sort of abbreviate it, okay? It says uh, your bill at a restaurant was 48.95 and that you want to tip 20 percent okay that's the scenario i mean you know it explains it in words it writes it out in like a big long paragraph but that's what's happening your bill at a restaurant was 48.95 and you want to tip 20 percent uh the question is obviously how much is your tip going to be i think actually they asked you how much the tip will be and then they ask you how much the total will be okay so two questions we have to answer first things first what does this mean? 48.95 and the tip is 20%. Well, think about our formula. Obviously, hopefully obviously, the percent is 20%. Always fill in the percent first because it's going to be the most obvious. That's going to be 20%, which hopefully you remember, we need to convert to a decimal. So 0.2 or 0 0.20 if you want the zero on there. Now the question is, is the 48.95 the whole or the part? Well, remember back a, a page or two ago, I said the whole is sort of your starting value. How much did, when you came up to the register today, how much did you start with? 
We started with 48.95. We're going to hit it with 20% and we're going to get some more out of it, right? So the 48.95 is your actual starting value. That's how much you started with when you went to the register. We're going to do 20% of that and that's going to give us the tip, right? Is what you multiply by, which is the tip, is what you're going to get out. We're not going to get the total here. We multiply by the tip, we're going to get the tip out, okay? So be aware of that. So we're taking 20% of 48.95, doesn't that make sense? 20% of 48.95, remember I said if you can take a percent of something, that thing is the whole. So what we are missing is the part, okay? So once again, same as last time, we're gonna go ahead and multiply. 48.95 times 0.2, again, I'm not worried about the decimal right now. Two times five is 10, carry the one. Two times nine is 18, Whoop, plus one, excuse me, that's gonna be 19, isn't it? Let's go and redo that. Give ourselves some clean air. See, everyone makes mistakes. Be careful, guys. It can happen. Watch out. Let's try that again. Two times five is 10. Carry the one. Two times nine is 18 plus one is 19. And notice, rather than trying to just fit it in here and all this and make it ugly, I just rewrote it. Just, it's always better just to rewrite stuff, guys. Two times eight is 16 plus one is 17. Carry the one. Two times four is eight plus one is nine. Okay. And so we have nine, seven, nine, zero. Now, how many decimal places were there in the answer in the problem? One, two, three. So our problem should have one, two, three. So our decimal goes right there. So really, can't we say our tip was nine dollars and seventy nine cents? Tip was nine dollars and seventy nine cents, right? That's what we got out of here. So in terms of the percent part, that's done. We took twenty percent of forty eight ninety five, and we got nine dollars and seventy nine cents. That's our tip. To get the total, you just add this back to the original value, right? That's got nothing to do with percentages. Here, we're just taking our tip and our pre-total, and we're adding them back together to see what our new final total would be. This is just adding in decimals. Notice I did line the decimal up here. Five and nine is 14, carry the one. One and nine is 10, plus seven, that's 17, carry the one. One and eight is nine, and nine is 18, carry the one, and one and four is five. Bring your decimal down, because again, this time we were adding, not multiplying. So we have a total of 58.74. Take a minute, catch up. This is what I meant by a percent word problem. They're not trivial. This is probably, I mean, I don't, you know, everybody's different. Most students would tell you this is the hardest part of the test. I don't know if I agree, but it, you know, it's, it, I'm not taking it, you are. So it's up to you, but definitely notice, you know, try to focus here. We did whole percent part, and this, this was an example, again, just like last time, where we knew the percent, we knew the whole, we didn't know the part, all right? Let's go ahead and move on. Again, pause at any time if you need to, guys. And you probably will on this one. All right, so let's continue on with the word prompts, doing some more examples. What I'm going to do now, again, we're still going to be doing whole times percent equals part. So I'm going to go ahead and just get that formula in there. This time, though, last time we did whole times percent equals part, and the part was the missing piece. This time, I want to go ahead and do one where the percentage is the missing piece. So what it's going to look like in these problems is we're gonna have the whole, we're gonna have the part, but we're not going to have the percent, okay? So that's gonna be the missing value this time. Again, it is still the same formula. I'm not trying to say there's three different formulas you need to memorize, it's not. It's one formula, assuming you even do it this way, but each time a different piece might be missing, all right? So let's say they asked us this following question. 15 is what percent of 75? Take a minute and just process that question. 15 is what percent of 75? Immediately you should be deciding, is the 15 the whole, is the 75 the whole, who's the part, who's the whole, what's the percent, right? Start plugging into the formula. Don't just sit here staring at this thing. Hopefully you realize the percent is the unknown. So when we say the percent, that's the piece I don't know. And we'll say X percent because I don't know it, which means we still have a whole and we still have a part. The percent is the unknown. Start with the percent, y'all. If the percent is given, well, that's your percent. If it says what percent, well, then that's what we don't know, isn't it? So is 15 the whole or is 75 the whole? Try to figure that out because that's the crucial bit here. Hopefully you're answering 75 and not because it's bigger. That is not the answer. The, the whole can be small. You can start off with a smaller number than you end up with. Think about, like I said, the stock market. If you invested $100 into the stock market, that would be your whole, your total, your, you know, your starting value. And then let's say you got 300 out, that would be your part. The part can be bigger than the whole, guys. It's not about size. In this case, it's the word of. 
what percent of 75 that makes 75 the whole without that statement we really wouldn't be able to know for sure so in this case the of is the given indicator what percent of 75 what are you taking the percent of 75 that makes 75 the whole and that makes 15 the part so there's your setup for that problem 75 times some percentage equals 15. now if you think back to the last ones real quick we go ahead and throw one of those back up on here for a second this is one of the first two we did you'll remember that in this case the part was what was missing and we just needed to multiply these two together and get the part so unfortunately it's not as simple as just multiplying this time because this is 75 multiplied by some value we don't know so you're going to have to have a, you know remember a little bit of the solving you probably were taught long long ago if you have 75 times x and you want to get the x by itself don't you need to divide by 75 to get rid of it right just a little bit of solving it should only be one step here guys what you do to one side though you do to the other so now we've got our missing percent and that equals 15 over 75. now you're not done a lot of people like that's kind of ugly isn't it? a lot of people like to stop here and say well I, I you know x percent x equals this so i'm done it's a percent though which is why i wrote it as a percent so what we have now is we do have the value the percent we're looking for is 15 over 75 because that's what the equation gave us the problem is converting that back into a percent so now you've got to remember how to convert fractions into a percent. First thing I'm going to do is reduce it. I don't like dealing with all the ugly numbers. Three goes into 15 three times, or excuse me, five goes into 15 three times. Five goes into 75 five times. So we, what we have here is three fifths, okay? Take a minute, make sure that makes sense to you. Oh, that's 15. Man, I'm all over the place today. Excuse me, make sure you catch that. Three fifteenths, not three fifths, which means we can reduce again Reduce three into three is one, three into 15 is five, so one fifth. So 15 over 75 reduces to one fifth. That's still not a percentage though. It's a lot easier of a fraction to deal with. You remember how to convert fractions to percentage. What I'm gonna do is divide it, get a decimal, and then convert the decimal to a percent. So maybe up here in the blank spot, we'll go ahead and divide it. So it's one divided by five, and again, the percent problem is probably the reason people say these are the hardest is because it, it requires you to recall everything. A couple of you have emailed me saying you're struggling with this or that. The percent problems are going to help you review. That's sort of the idea here. So five into one, don't forget the decimals behind the one, bring it up. Five goes into one zero times. Five goes into 10 twice. Two times five is 10. And it ends nice and evenly at 0.2. So one fifth is 0.2 as a decimal. As a percent, that would be 20%, and that's our final answer. So let's walk through that real quick again. We said 15 is what percent of 75? So the percent was the unknown. We're taking the percent of 75, which means 75 is the whole, and 15 is the part. I want to get x by itself, so I divided by 75 here and here. 15 over 75 reduces to 1 fifth, which turns into 0 0.2, which turns into 20%. So 15 is what percent of 75? 20%. I will stop and make sure that you understand, guys, how you do this does not matter to me. If you do something totally different, if you figured out what 10% of 75 was and then added half of that back in to make 15%, as long as your work holds up and I can validate that what you did is legitimate, it's fine. I'm just showing you the classic way to do it. This is not the only way, okay? So that was an example where we did not know the percent. Let's go ahead and do another one where we don't know the percent, just to have you know two of each. I'll do another word problem out of the homework, kind of help y'all out a little bit. This will be number 32 out of the homework. And again, this will be an example where we know the whole, we know the part, but we do not know the percentage. So again, if you want to put an X there, you can, it's totally up to you. So just to abbreviate, it says uh, you took a test and you got 12 questions correct, all right? You got 12 questions correct, and there was a total 18 questions total. Make sure you understand the situation. You got 12 questions correct on the test. There was 18 questions total, and the question the problem is asking is, what was your score? What was your percent score? Okay. I got to write a little smaller than normal, guys, just because we have to fit a lot in on a piece here, so apologies if it's a little bit muddled. So again, you had 12 questions correct, 18 questions total. What was your percentage score? Well, let's think about it. It's asking us what is the percent. So again, immediately when we set up our equation, we know that the percent is missing. 
So that makes X the percent. Start with the percent because it's either given or it's missing, one or the other. Now, what's the whole, 18 or 12? What are you taking the percent of? What did you get a percent? Let's, let's just make a number. Let's say you got 30%. What did you get 30% of, of 12 or 18? Well, 18 was the total, right? Isn't that the starting amount? Isn't that the whole? And the part that you got right is the 12? Hopefully that makes some sense to you. And so just like last time, we have 18 times some unknown X value equals 12. I want this X by itself. So to get rid of the times, I'm going to divide by 18. You just have to do it for both sides, okay? So X percent equals 12 over 18. The problem, and this is the, let me just rewrite that. The reason that I put the percent there is to remind us that we need a percentage, not a fraction, okay? So we have to reduce this and clear it up. Let's go ahead and reduce this by six. Six goes into 12 twice. Six goes into 18 three times. And so the percentage is two thirds before it's a percent. We still need to convert that fraction into a percent. I chose this one for a reason because three, two over three is not a clean answer. When you go to divide this, this is gonna be two divided by three. Put your decimal down and go. Three goes into two zero times. Three goes into 26 times. Six times three is 18. Subtract, it didn't end, so we keep bringing down. Three goes into 20, six times. Six times three is 18. We have a two, bring down. Three goes into 26 times, and you see where this is going. This is just gonna keep going on forever. So when you convert this to a decimal, what you get is 0.6 repeating. And a lot of people are confused then. I mean, you have, you've done it right, there is nothing wrong, but it's how do I convert a repeating decimal into a percentage? Well. Let's kind of just think about this. Wouldn't 0 0.6 kind of just be 0 0.6, 6, 6, 6, 6, and all these sixes outright? And if I move the decimal over twice, wouldn't it be 66.6 repeating, right? I mean, there's a million sixes here, but you're just moving the decimal over twice, so 66, and then there's just gonna be a bunch of sixes after that. So what it's gonna be is 66.6, .6, the six after the decimal will repeat, and that's your percentage. It's no big deal. So what I would tell you to do if you get a repeating one, bring it out the three decimals, move your decimal over twice, and it should still be repeating, right? Think about it. 0.6 repeating is the decimal, which means there's just a million sixes, however many you want. We move the decimal over twice, so it's 66, and then the rest of them are still repeating. Okay? Hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. So I just wanted to show you how to deal with a repeating decimal in a percent. It is still repeating as a percentage. You just move the decimal over twice and then put the repeat. All right. So again, the last two examples were ones where we did not know the percent. Take a minute, catch up, make sure this makes sense, and we will continue on in a moment. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and talk about the last variety of these problems you can get. We've done one where the whole was missing. We've done one where the percentage was missing. Now let's go ahead, or excuse me, let's back that up. That's not what we did. We did one where the percent was missing. That was the last two. And then the first two, we did one where the part was missing. What we haven't done now, we're going to just rewrite the formula. And what our next two are going to be, I want to do two examples where we don't know the whole. So this time we're going to know the percent and we're going to know the part, but we're not going to know the whole. That's going to be the missing piece this time. And to be fair, this is sort of a rare scenario where you know the percentage, you know how much came out, but you don't know how much you started with. It's, it doesn't really happen much in real life, but I mean, it's possible. So let's take an example here right out of the book. 30 is 12% of what number? 30 is 12% of what number? Again, hopefully by now you know exactly what my first step is going to be. I'm going to identify the percent, 12%, which we're going to write as 0.12. Remember, you have to convert it to a decimal. So I know the percent is 12. The question is, is the whole the 30? or is the part the 30? Well, remember what I said, you're taking 12% of the whole. Well, but we don't know what that is, but what you take the percent of is the whole. So 12% of what number? That means the whole is missing, which we talked about, which means that 30 is the part. So the setup should look like this. We don't know the whole, so we'll put an X there, times 12% equals 30. 30 is 12% of some number, which I don't know what it is. Okay, so there's your setup for that one. Hopefully you're recognizing this and, and, and realizing that we'll have to divide again because we have multiplication here. It's some number times 0.12 equals 30. So to get rid of the 0.12, we divide to both sides. 
all right? So x equals 30 over 0.12. Can you stop here? Well, you might be tempted to because I didn't ask for a percentage, but you also can't leave decimals inside of fractions. So how you handle this one is up to you. Uh, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could just divide it straight up. But we've done that on the last problem. So let me kind of, I don't want to say show you a trick, but, um, you know, you can do this a different way. I will divide it, but I just want to bring the point out that you can do it a different way. Um, I could move this decimal over twice to make that 12. And then I'd have to move this decimal over twice to make that 3,000. And then 12 into 3,000, if, if that's a little easier for you, then you don't have any decimals. Either way, guys, it doesn't matter. Whether you do 12 into 3,000 or 0.12 into 30, you're going to get the same answer. Okay? I just wanted to make the point, if you don't like the decimals, you can move them over. Just make sure you do it on both, and then you have a different set of numbers. But we'll go ahead and do the original, 30 divided by 0.12. 30 divided by 0.12. Where's your decimal on the 30 before you begin? Right behind it, right? Now, here's the thing, though. We got to adjust this decimal on the outside, right? Remember, you can't divide by decimals. So this needs to move over, and which means that one needs to move over, right? Don't forget about this. So now what we have is 12 on the outside and 3,000 on the inside. Hey, that's weird. It's almost like what I just told you would happen anyway, right? Crazy. All right, so put the decimal there, bring it up, and let's go. 12 does not go into 3, so we can move over to 30. 12 goes into 30 twice. 2 times 12 is 24. Subtract, we get 6. Bring down, we have 60. 12 goes into 65 times. 5 times 12 is 60. Subtract, 0. Bring down, because this 0 was not imaginary. It's part of the number. And 12 goes into 0, 0 times. So in the end, we got 250. Whether you did 0.12 into 30 or 12 into 3,000, the answer is 250 either way. So 30 is 12% of what number? Well, 12% of 250 is 30. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and do a word problem example. Again, pause at any time if you need to, guys. You do not need to go to the speed I'm going. I know I say that every time, and I will continue to say that every time. All right. Word problem. Let's say it's, and again, remember, just, just to keep the formula in your head, whole times percent equals part. Let's say it said something like this. You're at a, a basketball court or something like that, and you shot 15 baskets, we'll say. right? You actually made 15 baskets. I think shot 15 baskets is a weird way to say it, but you get what I'm saying. And let's say that they tell you, you shot 15 baskets and you had a 75% accuracy. Okay, 15 of the baskets, you shot 15 and that's 75% accuracy. So the question is, how many shots did you take in total? And again, we are talking about basketball, not alcohol. How many shots did you take in total? I don't want anyone getting the wrong idea. So you shot 15 baskets. We don't know how many you actually attempted, but 15 of them went in and you had a 75% accuracy. So how many shots did you take in total, right? So again, just start with the percentage right off the bat. Don't look at these problems and just try to do them in your head. Start out by filling in the, the uh, formula. The percent is 75 given to you. So 75, don't forget, we have to turn it into a decimal, so 0.75. And now what did you get 75% of? Was it 75% of the 15 or 75% of the total? Well, 75% of the total, which is what we don't know. The part of the total, the part of the number of shots that you got was 15. So this is our setup. We have 75% of however many shots we took, and 15 of those were actually successful baskets, okay? So once again, we simply divide by both sides. So yeah, you will have to divide by decimals on this test, guys. No joke about that. 15 divided by 0.75. And then we stop to do the division and see what we get. So 15 divided by 0.75, so 0.75 up here, 15 in here, 15 divided by 0.75. Know where the decimal is on 15, it's right after it. Very much like the last problem though, we're gonna have to convert this to a whole number out here to make that 75, which means we'll have to move this one in here and that one will become 1500. 75 doesn't go into one, so we can skip. 75 doesn't go into 15, so we can skip. 75 goes into, excuse me, 75 goes into 150 twice. Two times 75 is 150. Subtract, bring down, 75 goes into zero, zero times. So in this case, the answer was 20. And again, if you said, well, hold on a minute, 
If 75% was 15, then wouldn't 100% be 20? Totally legitimate. I have had people explain their work to me in paragraph form uh, on this test. Like they get the right answer and then the work that they submit to me just basically says, look, I know that it, you know, three quarters is 75 cents and all, you know, or whatever, whatever mental math they did. And some, so you don't have to show me all this arithmetic. If you can do it in your head, that's fine. You're just gonna have to give me some kind of explanation and it's gonna have to hold water. Just saying I did it, my head won't work. You're gonna to have to give me specific steps. So my suggestion is go ahead and just do it the long way with the, with the uh, formula. Because not only will you practice a little bit of solving, you're gonna practice your decimals as well, okay? So how many shots did you take in total? 20, we made 15, so it gives us a 75% accuracy, all right? Let's go ahead and stop for a second here. I, wanna, I don't wanna say review, but I wanna go back to the very beginning of the lecture, and I wanna point out to you what we've covered so far, all right? Just to make sure we're all on the same page, because this, this is probably the heaviest lecture of the semester. I mean, it's not the hardest material. That's subjective. Everybody thinks something, one thing is different than another, but it's definitely the kind of the heaviest, like the most complicated, I think. So again, what we have covered is the three different versions of this formula. There was some, the first two, where we didn't know the whole, or actually I think we did that one last. We did the one where we didn't know the part first. These are the first two. Then we did two where we didn't know the percent. Those are the second two. And then we wrapped it up with two where we didn't know the whole. So I've done six examples, two of each of these. We did, if I'm remembering this correctly, I think I did this out of order. We did these first where we didn't know the part. Then the second two I did were where we didn't know the percent. And then the third, uh, the last two I did where we didn't know the whole, okay? So just to keep it in mind, we've done six examples, two of each, try to keep your notes organized. What we're gonna move into now is the other type of word problem. There are really two types of word problems in the homework. Most of them are whole percent part, which is what we just spent all that time doing. The last type is different. And that's the good news because it's not one where you have to figure out what the whole is, what the percent is, what the part is, where do the pieces go. It's a little more straightforward than that. So I think you're gonna find the last kind to be a little bit easier. So the last type of word problem in the homework is called a percent increase or decrease it can be either one it does not have to be increase it could be decrease if you see the but then and that's the beautiful thing here they will use those words in the problem the problem will say what is the percent increase or what is the percent decrease if you hear those words you are not going to use whole percent part anymore whole percent part does not work here this is the one type of problem where this does not work so this requires a different formula, a little bit easier formula if I'm being quite honest. So like I said, once you get comfortable with these, when you see percent increase and percent decrease, you'll probably be a little happier because they're a little bit more straightforward. The formula here, and I'm just gonna write it out and then I'll explain it, is the absolute value of the difference, and again, that's not gonna make any sense right yet, but it will in a moment, divided by or over the original. And I know that doesn't make sense, I'll explain it in a minute. First of all, remember what absolute value means. Absolute value means whatever comes out of here has to be positive. That's all the absolute value means. That's all those bars mean. It's just whatever number you put in there, it has to be positive. I'm not sure I spelled difference right, but I'm not a spelling teacher, so we'll just let it go. Just pretend that's spelled correctly. I don't think that it is. Or maybe it is, and I don't even recognize a correctly spelled word. All right, so increase, decrease. Let's say the problem said the price of gold decreased, see they're using the word decreased, it's right in the problem, decreased from $80 per ounce, and that's how gold is done, is by the ounce, $80 per ounce to $64 per ounce, okay? So, you know, kind of absorb the situation. The price of gold decreased from 80 to 64 per ounce, right? And the question is, this is how they would phrase it, what was the percent decrease? So again, they're very clear about the fact that this is a percent increase or decrease problem. What was the percent decrease? The fact that you see this phrase means this is the formula we want to use. Now, let's, call, let's talk about that formula for a minute. What does difference mean? Well, think about it. What would the difference in your last two uh, utility bills be, right? My GRU bill for last month was 300 and this month it's 250, so the difference is $50. How did I get that difference? By subtracting them, right? So the difference here says take the two values, 80 and 64, and subtract them. 80 minus 64 is 16. Now that is in uh, absolute value, so it does have to come out positive. 
Now, 80 minus 64 is 16 positive anyway. So what's up with the absolute value? Why do I need that if it came out positive anyway? Well, I didn't say the difference in what order. So sometimes people will say, well, 64 minus 80, that's negative 16. Well, it is, but that's why we put the absolute value. The absolute value abs actually guards you from making a mistake. So if you put 80 minus 64 and get positive 16, or if you put 64 minus 80 and got negative 16, it doesn't matter because it's an absolute value. It's going to make it positive 16 either way. Think about what I'm saying. If you did 64 minus 80 in here, you'd get negative 16, but the absolute value of negative 16 is still 16. So the beautiful thing is it doesn't matter which order you subtract them. In. As long as you remember, the answer has to come out positive. Now, this is gonna be divided by the original value. Now, this is, you do have to pay attention to. In the order of the problem, what was the original value of the gold? The price of gold went from 80 to 64, which means 80 was the original price. So this is over 80. So this is over 80. So 16 over 80 is our setup. We'll go ahead and squeeze the working down here. So we had 16 over 80, but it asked what was the percent decrease. So once again, we have to convert a fraction into a percent. Probably the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and just reduce it first. Let's reduce by uh, eight. Eight goes into 16 twice. Eight goes into 80 10 times. Now we have two over 10, which you could reduce again if you wanted to, right? I could reduce by two. Two goes into two once. Two goes into 10 five times, and I got one fifth. I believe we divided this earlier, but either way, go ahead and divide this out and get the decimal of 0 0.2. Try this one on your own. Divide one fifth, five into one, and get 0 0.2, which then converts to 20%. So what was the percent decrease? 20%. It didn't go down by $20. That's not what we said. It went down by $16. But what's 10% of 80? Eight. And what would 16 be? Twice that. So not 10%, but 20%. But again, you don't need to do this in your head. That's not what we're asking. We just want you to realize. So if I tell you the price of gold decreased from this amount to this amount, and that's a percent decrease, you're going to use this formula which means you subtract the two values up top. does not matter what order you subtract them in because it's going to come out to the same number either way because of the absolute value. You put it back over the original, which will give you a fraction, and then you simply convert the fraction with division to a decimal and then the decimal to a percent. Okay? Let's go ahead and do one more. I'll do another example of these just to make sure we're clear, and that'll wrap us up. Start on this homework as soon as possible, guys. Hopefully you've already done the first half. This homework can be long and tedious, and you do have a test coming up very shortly after it's due, so don't delay. Give yourself as much time as possible, all right? Uh-oh, camera's auto-focusing again. I don't know what. I don't think it likes blank paper. There it goes. Okay, so let's do this one more time. Let's do one more example. This time, again, we're doing the percent increase, increase, slash decrease. If you can't tell, I am not a great speller. I often have to go back and correct myself. Percent increase, decrease. And remember, the formula here is the absolute value of the difference between the values. There's only going to be two values. I think I spelled it right, actually. Over original. Man, I'm just having trouble today with the spelling. Absolute value of difference over original. So let's say we said the, let's make one up here. The temperature in July rose from, I don't know what number is going to not be too messy here. Let's say rose from 90 degrees to 94.5 degrees on average, okay? What was the percent increase? What was the percent increase in temperature, all right? Now, real quick, let me bring the last one back. Where did I put it? I think it's right here. Notice this one said percent decrease, right? The gold, the price went down on the gold. We still didn't put a negative. We still just said 20%. That's why we put the absolute value because we don't deal in negative percentages. Uh, if you, let's say your score went down on the test 20%, I don't say it's negative 20%. We just say you lost 20%, right? So temperatures in July rose from 90 degrees to 94.5 degrees. What was the percent increase in temperature? So you should hopefully be using this formula. I like to just subtract the bigger minus the smaller just so I don't have to deal with negatives, even though the absolute value sort of eliminates that issue. So the difference would be 94.5 minus 90 over the original. Now, again, the original does matter. It's whichever one you had first. Temperatures in July were originally 90 and then rose to 94.5.
So this should be over 90. 94.5 minus 90 is going to be 4.5, and that's going to be over 90. So this is going to be our fraction. Now we have to convert that fraction into a percentage. And again, the easiest way to do this is to just divide. So 4.5 divided by 90. Where's the decimal on 90? It's already on the end. We already have a whole number, so there's no need to move it. We can just bring it up and go. 90 does not go into 4. 90 does not go into 45. So we have to add a zero. 9 into 450, or 90 into 450. Well, how many times would 9 go into 45? Five times, right? Well, 90 goes into 450 five times as well. So 0 0.05 is our decimal, which we can convert to a percentage of 5%. Not 50, be careful, 5%. So how much did the, what was the percent increase in temperature? It was a 5% increase in temperature. Okay, so again, the first six problems we did, guys, were of the whole percent part, and I did, I went through and did one of each, or two of each, rather, uh, each variety, one where we were missing the whole, where we were missing the percent, where we were missing the parts, so and go back through and do those, and then the last two we did were the increase-decrease problems, which you will know because they will quite literally use the phrase percent increase or percent decrease, okay? So this should be the back half of homework seven. Uh, use these examples to help you through. Again, this is not how you have to do them. This is just simply the method that I think is the most applicable. Uh, you know, it makes sense why it works. It's pretty, hopefully pretty clear. So, you know, we'll go from there. So uh, study up, get homework seven done, start reviewing for the test guys. And again, as always, let me know if I can help and I will see you on the next one.